Hey guys, so I am here today with Lauren and we are in London. We've been dying to make a video again for a super long time now. Finally, we're back at it. And today I actually wanted to talk with her about South Africa because as many of you probably know, she was there for about two weeks covering many of the issues that the country's facing. Would you say most notably it's the um, epidemic of white farm murders and then the displacement of the whites? Well, that's what's so interesting about this South Africa documentary and project I'm doing right now is we went there with the intention of exploring if this, what some people are calling a quote unquote white genocide yeah. in the more far right spheres or uh, epidemic of farm murders. Um, we wanted to see if there was anything to that because yeah. I don't know. I don't get much news from South Africa. The foreign press doesn't report on it much yeah, at all exactly. anymore. Completely so it. we just kind of wanted to explore if that was real, how much merit there was to it. And it ended up just becoming a landslide of an amalgamation of different fascinating issues we uncovered mm -hmm. that just are not even remotely being covered in the foreign press. Well, I have to say, you guys really reignited the conversation around this. I remember several months ago, maybe in the summer of 2017, it seemed to be mm -hmm. kind of an issue. A lot of people were making videos about it, but then it just went dead in the water. No one was really speaking about it. But then after you've been putting out these videos, you've put out seven or eight now, but you're gonna have 10, and then you have the long form documentary, Farmlands. But it's kind of reignited, and now I'm seeing people talk about this everywhere, which is awesome. Um, so just to start out though, I wanted to ask why you wanted to do this because going there was really dangerous for you. It was like you put yourself at a personal risk. So why was it important enough for you to go? Right. So I've been wanting to do this for over a year. In fact, a year ago I booked tickets to go and I was literally at the airport and wow. then I had someone basically talk me out of it mm -hmm. and be like, no, 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 this is too dangerous. Like you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. I've talked to you about it before many times saying like, I really want to go check this out and see if it's real. I was there when you were being talked out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then I finally uh, ran into uh, the guys that are doing filming for me right mm -hmm. now, uh, George and Kaylin and helping with production. Mm -hmm. And I had this opportunity to go again in January and it was kind of this tight, tight timeline where yeah. we had a guide and everything. And I was like, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And yeah. I've been really wanting to find out if this is real. Not to mention when you talk to a lot of the guides and the people in South Africa saying, hey, I'm thinking of coming, you really don't want to get their hopes up and yeah. cancel or whatever because they they are so desperate for attention on their issues. Yeah. So part of it was like, I, I better, like morally, mm -hmm. this needs to be told. Morally, it, it must, their, their stories must be told. It can't just be forgotten because as we know, when the victors, if the victors win and they kick out all of the whites from South Africa, as many people are advocating and the government uh, is advocating taking their land, it, the victors will write history and a lot of the stories of what happened to the white South Africans will not be told. Mm -hmm. So it's now or never. Yeah, you guys have really lifted the lid off of it though, because like it's one thing to hear about this occurring. Like I remember reading just a couple alt media sites mm -hmm. would cover it and they'd write about what was going on, but it's one thing to just hear that. It's quite another for you to go there, interview these people, see their stories, like, and it's real and you can't deny it. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it so much more, I, like I hate to say it, but a lot of people have to see things and then it makes the impact that much greater and then a far more important issue like people are talking about it now but I know that South Africa is one of the, like the most dangerous countries in a world in the world it's something like 52 people are killed a day but most of them are black so why did you focus on the whites right so that that's one thing that I wanted to make very clear mm -hmm. and I did a whole video on this on both my Facebook and YouTube mm -hmm. saying I would never deny that there are problems in South Africa and certainly with the government and corruption that affect all the people there. I mean, of course, the colored people there, which this is an interesting little tidbit, colored was obviously seen as a, quite an offensive word yeah. to use in America and such, but that's actually just the term they use for mixed race people in South Africa. They face a lot of discrimination. Uh, the Hottentots and Khoi people, or Khoi, sorry, <laughs> the more native people mm -hmm. to South Africa, they face a ton of discrimination from the Bantu people there. Uh, it's, it's just, there are class issues everywhere. There are tribal racial issues everywhere and it affects everyone. There's massive corruption in the South African government, which affects everyone. But the reason that I was focusing on white South Africans is there needs to be a balancing of scales. Yeah. The media will not talk about what happens to white South Africans because if you even say, look at this poor woman who had her family murdered, which you'd think is an issue that everyone would agree with. Yes, that's terrible. No, 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 people will call you a white supremacist. They'll yeah. say, you're clearly trying to stir up racial tensions. You're trying to make us feel bad for the colonizers. What are you talking about? It's seen as just, 
insane that you would talk about the issues that happen to white South Africans. Yeah. And it's, it's bizarre because it's not just a discrimination in the culture. It's a very clear documented discrimination from the government that are clearly saying we are making economic policies that hurt whites. We want to take their land without compensation. Yeah. Shoot, kill the boar is what they're singing at their political meetings. This is obviously happening. It's not a white supremacist conspiracy theory. And yet it's almost universally ignored by the mm -hmm. mainstream media. That is why I'm talking about this issue. It's a balancing of scales on this is something that's not being talked mm. about. But you're still being accused, like, this is a, a white supremacist documentary in disguise, is what oh my goodness. A, a lot of the, uh, you know, more, what is it, right-wing watch-ish sites are, are, are saying. Jared but, Holt yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, though, that, that you can watch this, like, these real people going through this and then just say it's, like, a fraud, a white, cons you know, a white supremacist conspiracy. It's, it's nonsense. And that's the thing. You can go ahead and you can call me all the names in the book. I can handle it. I don't care. I've been called every single thing. I've had things thrown at me. People attack me. It doesn't matter to me. But the people I'm talking to, they aren't right-wing or left-wing. A lot of them have no no qualms about politics. They just love their family. They love their country. They love all the people in their country as well. None of them, these people aren't racist. They, they, they've just genuinely had their families murdered, massacred, their friends, their suffering. The government has uh, been, been against them, gotten them fired because of their race. They, yeah. they have genuinely gone through horrific, horrific struggles. And while you can go ahead and accuse me of all the things you want, these people's stories are real. Yeah. It's, a, it's just a fact. And to simply wipe that away as white supremacist nonsense is the most disgusting, disgusting thing I've, I've seen. And it's, mm. I mean, it's infuriating. It's mm. really, really infuriating. Agreed. And kind of on that note, you made a really, it was probably one of my favorite you've put out so far. It was on the white displacement camps. Mm. And what do you say to people who say that, why are you concerned with, you know, the white displacement in South Africa, but then not the Muslim displacement in the Middle East? Like, how is it different? So, yeah, there's a few big criticisms I got uh, for that video, which I still, it's it's bizarre to me. I, we, when we see videos about um, people in poverty from different groups all across the world, you never see the kind of reaction that I've gotten to this. You never see people, what about this group? How yeah. dare you talk about uh, poor Syrians? How dare you talk about this people? This is, like, you don't see that reaction. People are like, oh, wow, that sucks, even if there are other things going on in the world. Um, but the reason it's different, because I obviously wouldn't march into a refugee camp in Europe and make a video similar to that, but because, first of all, the refugee camps that I've gone to in Europe, they're almost entirely fighting age men. They're yep. men that are going and looking for economic prosperity. And they'll tell that to you. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll quite openly say, oh yeah, I'm looking for, looking for a job. I'm looking for um, welfare, whatever it may be. And it's not like these women, women and children in these camps for the, for the most part. This one that they had in South Africa was a de, de facto refugee camp, because refugee means you fled the country, but they're stuck in South Africa. They can't leave for the most part. And it's largely children. It's genuinely children. Like you can see in the video, yeah. it, a large amount of these are kids that have been literally denied going into daycares because of their skin color. They've been denied getting help from hospitals because of their skin color. Funding from the government for... Uh, aid for them has been cut off because of their skin color. It's horrible. But also these people, they really want to work. And they do, they do. Mm. Want, that's the thing. That I've, I've never seen this in a camp in Europe at all. They had built gardens. They were building homes out of wood and building them together. And all of them were working when we came there. They were freaking cleaning up the leaves on the ground. Like if, if there was something to do, they would be doing it. And mm. you just don't see that at the camps in Europe. These are people, one of the guys I spoke to, was an engineer who lost his job because of the black economic empowerment laws, which say you could only hire 8% whites and a ton of organizations had to just fire all their white employees. And he's like, it's, it's really difficult for me to find work now. Mm -hmm. So I'm here and I'm working the farm and they're feeding each other, they're helping, they've built, and that's the thing, people were like, oh, they're lazy. No, 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 they're running a shop there as well. They built a community that's sustainable outside of the community that is biased against them for their skin mm -hmm. color. They're not just sitting there and asking for handouts. They work all day. Yeah. They're doing the best with what oh. they have. It and then another thing that I got, a lot of people saying, oh, there's such a small portion of whites that are in poverty compared to um, blacks. And I don't deny that there are plenty of blacks in South Africa that are in poverty, but that wasn't the point. The point of this video was the government is clearly discriminating mm -hmm. against these people and causing this. 
whatever the causes of the black poverty may be, and of course there have been wrongs done in the past, that doesn't make the wrongs against these people any less wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make the discrimination any less wrong or the fact that children are being kicked out of daycares any less wrong. So that just made me so angry, those accusations. Yeah. So uh, the president of South Africa, Zuma, he was recently forcibly made to step down and now they have a new president. So do you think that things are going to be different for the whites, better for the whites under this new president? Or what's the situation? I, I got a lot of people tweeting me saying, Lauren, look at this. This is awesome. You've got this corrupt leader stepping down. And yes, Zuma was corrupt. I mean, he had so many counts of corruption against him. It was just untenable to look at yeah. if, if these things, I mean, there's certainly corruption within America and Canada, but they're just better at hiding it. Zuma's was uh, quite public. And yes, he also advocated the taking away of land from the whites, so it's great that he stepped down. He uh, was certainly not the kind of leader you want in a rainbow nation, Garden of Eden, that the progressive left like to pretend South Africa is. However, what people have to understand about South Africa is this isn't just a few people pushing this message of anti-boar, uh, take the land stuff. It's the entire government. You, all of the parties, all of the parties, the parties that are in power, the parties that are competing against them, everyone is anti-Afrikaner, anti-white people in South Africa. So, in fact, just today, it's, it's in the news, surprisingly, because you don't usually see a whole lot of press about South Africa, but it's in the news that Ramaphosa, the guy who's replaced him, mm -hmm. has come out and openly said, we're taking white land without compensation as well. So is it... Great change, cool, you got rid of a corrupt guy, but there you go, another corrupt guy right in his place yeah. that is planning on doing the exact same things that mm -hmm. Zuma was doing. So no change. Well, I know like a lot of people have been talking about, I don't know, would you say it's fear-mongering that, oh, civil war is inevitable, there's going to be a big civil war in South Africa um, eventually within the next five, ten years or so. What After what you've seen, what do you think? Okay, so here's the thing about issues like civil war and genocide. Mm -hmm. Well, I would not come out and say this is a an active genocide right now. Mm -hmm. I would agree with people like Genocide Watch who would put it who have put it at a 6 or 7 on the Genocide Watch scale where it's mm -hmm. ramping up the the discrimination by the government, the discrimination by the people, people being tortured and picked off and killed, the ignoring of the issue by um, the police, they're refusing to record they're, they're recording the murders happening to white South Africans as robberies gone wrong, so you can't have any reporting on yeah. what's going on. All of these things are steps in the direction of something far more catastrophic and horrific. And when it comes to these issues, these very powerful words like civil war and genocide, you never want to be observing and defining that 10 years after it happens. Yeah. And saying, wow, we should have seen, we should have seen that coming, you know, darn. Well, at least we can now definitely say a civil war happened. We can definitely say a genocide happened. No, no, no. You usually want to get in there a few steps before it happens yeah. and point out this is likely what this is going to lead to. Mm -hmm. And all of the things that are happening right now in South Africa, the race relations are horrific right now. The politicians coming out and screaming, kill the boar on stage. They have 10% of the vote, vote, the EFF, and they're singing, kill, kill the yeah. white people. When that's happening, that is absolutely the powder keg waiting to be settle it and we we can see it now and we have to call it out now because we yeah. don't want to be the one saying well i waited so i could be 100 percent correct and didn't get called a bigot or an exaggerator no no no. you want to get in front yeah. of this stuff i mean at that <laughs> point there the window's gone where you can de-escalate the yes. situation it's already happening and then what are you going to do but the thing is you've gone you've reported you've made these issues known to the world and whoever's willing to watch and to listen so when it does happen people can't say that they, they weren't warned the information wasn't there yeah. so but the mainstream media still is largely ignoring it and I mean, they could do a lot of help reporting on it. Because, I mean, aren't we sending something like $3 million for an aid mm -hmm. to South Africa? That, that's, uh, that's a very good point. Can't mm -hmm. say you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Can't say you didn't know. Jared Holt, all y'all at Right Wing Watch and the rest of you calling this a white supremacist documentary. Mm -hmm. Five, ten years from now, you can't say you didn't know, but you can say you dismissed it. Absolutely. can say you just missed it. Right? So you have farmlands coming out pretty soon. Where's the best place for people to go to get information on it and just keep updated with the process? Um, 
Yes, you can go to farmlands.online. That's the main site where all of the videos are uh, being posted. That's where you, if you want to help with equipment or whatever for future documentaries and also for farmlands, you can go there. And the full documentary is still in the process of editing. Of course, this is my first documentary that I'm completing. I'm working on another one as well. They're huge projects. I've never done this before, but I've got a great team. So it will be completed hopefully within a month and it'll be out and ready uh, to be distributed and watched and it's going to be free on YouTube. This isn't about making money at mm -hmm. all. People are supporting me independently. They're donating independently for the purpose of getting the word out and letting people know. It's not a money project, yeah, yeah. so it'll be out there for free so you can share it, you can show people and mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest things. Not everyone has money to donate, so sharing it, sharing the information, that is the point of this trip. Yeah, yeah. So if you do anything at all, share these videos. Okay, awesome. I'll link all the relevant links down so people can find them and go visit and keep updated on it. But thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank and you, Brittany. Yeah, it course. was lovely to see you again yeah, as you well. Too, I missed too. you. Yeah, too. <laughs> all right, thanks so much everyone for watching. Really hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Bye.